In this video, we're starting off with the new chapter for grade 11 called Functions, and we're starting off with the parabola by revising what you did in grade 10. In real life, there are many examples of parabolas, like a projectile shot out of a cannon, a ball that is thrown or kicked, water flowing from a fountain, and as an example of a positive parabola, we can have a look at a suspension bridge. The standard equation of a parabola has three forms that it can take. In the first form, you can clearly see the y-intercept. The second form indicates the turning point, And the third form shows you the x-intercepts. But in grade 10, we only focus on the form y is equal to ax squared plus c. Now we're quickly going to recap what transformations the a and the c value can indicate. Here we have the mother graph for the parabola y is equal to x squared with the a value being 1 and the c value 0. Next, if I make the a value bigger, you will see that the arms of the parabola move closer and closer to the y-axis. And when I make this a value smaller than 1, the arms move further away from the y-axis and become wider. This a value can of course also be negative. When I make this a value negative, it means there's a reflection around the x-axis. Once that reflection has happened, we will now have a sad face parabola. And then, same as with the positive value, the bigger this negative value becomes, the closer the arms move to the y-axis. Next, we can focus on the c value. And any constant value added moves the graph vertically upwards. When this value is negative and we subtract a constant value, the whole graph moves vertically down. This c value indicates the y-intercept and also the turning point of the graph. The turning point of a graph is the point where the graph changes from decreasing to increasing. Or, of course, if the a value was negative, it's the point where the graph changes from increasing to decreasing. So, to sum up the transformations, the sign of the a value indicates whether it is a happy face parabola, concave up, when positive, or concave down and a sad face when negative. The size of the a value indicates a vertical stretch. So, if this value is bigger than 1, the arms move closer to the y-axis and each other, and when this value is smaller than 1, it moves further away from the y-axis. The c value of the graph indicates a vertical translation. It indicates whether the graph moved vertically upwards or downwards. This value also indicates the y-intercept as well as the turning point's y-value. For any graph, there are certain coordinates, values and lines that you need to be able to identify. Firstly, you need to be able to identify the x-intercepts. In our example, that will be the point minus 2, 0 and the point 2, 0. Next, you need to be able to give the coordinate of the y-intercept, which in this case is also the turning point, and that is at 0, minus 4. In grade 11, we will also translate the graph horizontally and then the turning point and y-intercept will have two different coordinates. The turning point is also an indication of where the axis of symmetry will be. The axis of symmetry is a line that can be drawn, dividing the graph into two mirror images of each other. In our example, this is the line x is equal to 0, which is also the y-axis. Next, you also need to be able to identify where the graph decreases and increases. This graph decreases to the left of our symmetry axis. These are all the x values smaller than 0. And then this graph increases to the right of the axis of symmetry, which means all x values bigger than 0. Next, you need to be able to determine the domain of the graph. 
This will be all the x values that form part of the graph. To determine the domain, we're going to draw a vertical line and move it across the system of axes and determine where it intersects our graph. You will see that in our case, it always intersects the graph. This means that the domain will be all real values. Lastly, you need to be able to determine the range of the graph, which describes all the y values that form part of the function. For this, we are going to draw a horizontal line and move this from bottom to top, and then describe for which y values our line intersects the graph. The first time our line will intersect or touch the graph is at minus 4, and then it will continue intersecting for every value above that. So the range will be all y values bigger or equal to minus 4. Let's go and have a look at how you should go about sketching a parabola. We are asked to sketch the parabola and clearly indicate all the intercepts with the axes. When drawing any graph, a good starting point is getting a rough idea of what the graph should look like. Firstly, in our case, the minus in front indicates that this is a sad face parabola that is concave downwards. The 3 indicates that the arms of this parabola moved closer to the y-axis. And then we have the plus 27, which shows that the parabola moved 27 units upwards. Now it is clear that this graph will intersect the y-axis as well as the x-axis, and we need to determine all three of these coordinates. To determine the y-intercept, you can change the x value in the equation to 0, which will make the whole first term 0. Or you can simply remember that the constant value at the end indicates the y value of the y intercept. To calculate the x intercepts, we need to substitute the y value in our equation with a 0, and then we can solve x. Now we can say that the coordinates for the x intercepts will be at minus 3, 0, and at 3, 0. Now we are ready to draw the graph. If you're not given an accurate system of axes, it's always easier to first draw the form of the parabola and then adding the coordinates. Our y-intercept is at 0, 27, and we calculated the x-intercepts to be at minus 3 and at 3. It is also always good to indicate the axis of symmetry and in this case, it will be at x is equal to 0. In example 2, we're once again starting off by getting a rough idea of what the sketch should look like. In this example, we have a happy face parabola, and this is indicated by the positive a value that was given. The plus 2 indicates that this graph now moves up 2 units and will look like this. From this, we can see that the graph will intersect the y-axis, but will have no x-intercepts. The y-intercept, we already know, is at 0, 2. And now we can immediately go and draw the graph. This parabola has only one intercept with the axis, and that is at the point 0, 2, which is also the turning point. Next, we can indicate the axis of symmetry, and once again, that will be on the line x is equal to 0. Although this graph has no x-intercepts, it is very important to always indicate more than one coordinate on a graph. And in this case, we can then choose any extra coordinates. I then always choose to substitute easy x-values. For example, I would substitute minus 1 into x's place. If I now change my x value in the equation to minus 1, square that and add 2, the corresponding y value will be 3. And because this parabola is symmetrical around the y-axis, I can immediately say that when I substitute x with 1, I will also get a y value of 3. 
So when there are no x-intercepts, you need to remember to always add two extra coordinates. In the next video, we're going to have a look at how we can also translate this parabola horizontally. If you feel that you need more revision on the grade 10 parabola, you can follow the link in the description to the grade 10 videos.